Hey guys, Dave from Nerdarchy, four nerds, by nerds, hanging out with these nerds. Nate the Nerdark. Nerdark is Ted. Today we do a character build for you from Farm Boy to Fighting Man. Jump down to the description below where you can sign up for Nerdarchy the newsletter, get weekly gaming tips, as well as learn how to game with us. And once again, the patrons have spoken! <laughs> well, not really, they only spoke once or thrice, as the case may be. It's kind of like that stupid thresh. <laughs> so we did this poll, and as you know, we already put up our Dwarven Tunnel Runner, which was, you know, Out Outlander, Rogue, Dwarf, and we built something off of what the patrons had told us. But we had a runner-up. Well, we kind sort of, of sort of have a runner-up. So when we when we did the, the, the poll for races, Dwarf was the winner. Definitive. Definitive winner. But for second place, we were tie. And it was a three-way tie between elf, human, and half-elf. So it's like, all right, how do we pick? But not only that, we had a, a three-way tie again for the backgrounds, which was folk hero, hermit, and soldier. But we did not have a tie for their class. <laughs> yes. Indeed, we had fighter. So we're going to do a second character build, but we're kind of going to figure this out. Right, right here, right uh, now. undecided. So he's a fighter. Absolutely. And the question is, do we want him to be human, half-elf, or elf? So I would say half-elf. Half-elf, uh, I would say folk here. We're, we're, we're voting on race, man. I, I was getting ahead. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> All right, half-elf. You also agree with half-elf. I like half-elf. Yeah. Because I want to pick folk hero. So folk hero. <laughs> uh, I'm kind of surprised Ted didn't go human because he really likes human for the feet. True, but I got an idea of what I, what I'm doing here. You have an idea of what you're doing here. Well, yeah, I see. Well, so, what, what was what race would you pick? It doesn't matter now. We have two half elves. <laughs> it doesn't matter because dwarf is one of the options. <laughs> yeah. He's like, hey, you guys. He's, He's like, well, elf is out because elf can't have a beard, so mm -hmm. that leaves human or half elf. But since the two of us are already saying half elf. He's yeah, like, well, it doesn't matter what he says. Okay, it, it well, you really go you go for for background first, then. Okay, I'll go for background first. Background was folk hero, hermit, or soldier, huh? Mm -hmm. But we're playing a fighter, so I really don't like hermit for the fighter background. I, I would I would agree with that as well. That one feels a little weird, and, unless you're going battle master or whatever it's called. It's called battle master. Which depends on which one you're talking about. Archetype, sorry. Yeah, the archetype battle master. There is a battle master, yeah. but there's also. There's also an Eldritch Knight, and there's also a champion. <laughs> so if we did that, if we were shooting for that archetype, I could say that I could see a hermit. Oh, uh, like that. almost like the old kung fu master that goes and hides out and yeah. just studies his thing. Okay, I, I can see, I can feel that. Or disaffected, disaffected. But of the of the something. three, I think I think hermit is the least fitting to right. fighter. I agree. So then there's soldier and full and full hero. Soldier is very like run of the mill, stereotypical for your fighter, like. Soldier is like a game. Soldier is the fighter, what Out Outlander is to Barbarian, really, essentially. <laughs> yes. And then, uh, but then Folk Hero is, is something completely different because Folk Hero can almost go anywhere. I agree. Which is kind of interesting. So I think I do like the Folk Hero for this one. All right. So this, this is this is building perfectly to what I would like to do. I like the half elf, half elf Folk Hero fighter. So we can hash this out. But my idea was all right, half elves are very charismatic. So. We, we have a high charisma, we have a high dex, and you make him be an agility fighter. And you have him kind of, even though we're... Wherever agility is, he will be there and he will be fighting it. No. Uh -oh. you, you, have him, you have him fight with a finesse weapon. You have him fighting using, using dexterity as his thing. And you have him being like the panache fighter. You know, so he's he's doing jibes and he's doing you know quips while he's fighting. So he's very charismatic. He's probably going to have either ranks in persuasion or deception, and he's going to want to incorporate that into his fighting style. So what's his dump stack going to be? Well, I'm getting ahead of myself. All right, so folk hero, fighter, uh, half elf. So archetype. Are you thinking battle master then? I, either battle master or champion. Both work for me. Um, I like Battlemaster because it can. I think it can be the most embarrassing to other people. When you know you can disarm them, you can trip them. You can. It it, it would definitely work with, um, if you want to make him kind of like a swashbuckler. Yes. Yeah. Without. But I I think you could still get away with being a swashbuckler. Are we building with, a three musketeer? 
It could be. <laughs> one yeah, one third feel, of a Three Musketeer. I kind of feel like it. <laughs> Which isn't really a snack. It's, really kind of, it's kind of the feel that I'm getting here. Well, I mean, he's not. His Three Musketeers, they had guns. This guy's not having a gun. Man, yeah, I mean, they, mainly they fought with swords. It's yeah. like, maybe they're swashbucklers. So, it was back when guns stunk. <laughs> so I, I have no problem with it going in that direction, but that that's kind of the fighting style I would see for him, yes. Okay, well, Battle Master probably fits the best. It gives you the most options. You know, you're going to want to probably, you might, you might want to take feats that are either, you know, are kind of like leadership driven or, or things like, uh, what is the one that, the, the, the one that lets you parry as a reaction? Uh, the, 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 the maneuver? No, no, not the maneuver. There's actually a feat. Oh. You can give up your reaction and just basically you get your, your proficiency bonus as a bonus to your armor class against one attack. Yeah, that would, that would totally work. You know, and although this character might not need it because he's going to have uses for all of his actions, mm-hmm. that is one of the strengths of the battle master. Especially if you pick well, you're going to be able to use your battle, your your bonus actions, your reactions, your your regular attacks. But so, as a dex fighter, will he be using heavy armor? Probably not. No, that's what I was thinking. So parry would actually be really helpful for a bonus armor class. As would you know if you go to weapon fighting. Being able to, you know, basically you get a, half of half of a shield bonus. Oh yeah, and you that know, extra attack with your bonus with your offhand. With your offhand, you know, especially if you're looking for economy of action. Mm-hmm. So, what are we thinking for for stats? Okay, so I would say, you know, since it's a half elf, he's got, he gets two floating plus ones. So let's put the the fifteen in the decks and give him one of the one of the plus ones there. Fourteen that, con. For, uh, or 13 con. 13 con, put the other plus there. So that gives you 16 decks, 14 con, 16 charisma, because you use your 14 there. Hmm. Really? Gonna use your 14 there? I was thinking, like, maybe the 12 and make it another 14. Okay, so where do you want to put the 14? Uh, wisdom? Uh, we have wisdom, intelligence, and strength. So I would put the 10 in strength so he's not a weakling. Put the eight into intelligence and give him the high wisdom. Give him a decent wisdom, yeah. For battle master, do you need your intelligence for any of your? No, not really. Not really. Okay. Or, or unless you want to dump wisdom and have a higher intelligence, so you can be more witty. Yeah, I'm, I'm kind of. I don't know where I go. I don't think. Yeah, you know, I just don't see the the kind of the dullard as the swashbuckler. Mm-hmm. Okay, so you want to give him the. The, the higher intelligence then? I think so. The lower wisdom makes more sense because he's more likely to be foolhardy yeah. okay. and do things right. that, that aren't necessarily wise. Yeah, so he's got a trouble. swash and buckle and stuff. So he's got a 14 constitution, 14 intelligence, and a 14 wisdom. Sorry, 14 charisma. Yeah, he's got good stats. Like, he's good across the board. And, like, it's like we said, a lot of times when you do these kind of, like, unorthodox builds, you don't, a lot of times you don't end up with a lot of great stats, but you end up with... A lot of above average stats, but well, in mean, this case, he still has a 16. He's got a yeah. 16 and three 14s. That's pretty impressive. Yeah, well, you know, half elves get a lot of stat bumps. <laughs> <laughs> half elves are impressive. Yeah, they get a plus four. You know, they're as impressive as a, as impressive as a mountain dwarf. So, <laughs> on to what next? Skills? Yeah, so half elves get two, they get two skill b- skills they get to pick from. We're going to get two from our, um, from being a folk hero, and we're going to get two from, from being fighter. a fighter. So I would say the two from fighter. I mean, your your choices are limited. So I would say one of them should be athletics. That's going to be the most I agree. the most fitting, because um, they're going to jump around and do all kinds of crazy things. Being a well, acrobatics player. would make sense too. Then, if you but go they don't there. they don't get acrobatics as an option. Well, we're half elf. We can make this happen. <laughs> well, oh, it's any skills, right? Yeah, well, yeah. half yeah. elves can take half elves can take anything. So oh, uh, we can take perception. Then kind of offset our we our uh, weak okay wisdom score. So yeah, then, so we don't totally fail. Yeah. So we're gonna have That's perception, good. and uh, athletics, athletics, acrobatics, and do we want persuasion or do we want deception? Hmm, I would go with. Well, it depends. What kind of rogue is he? Romantic rogue? I mean, not rogue. Romantic swashbuckler, or you know, is he kind of like the you know more of the um, loud mouth braggart mm. kind of swashbuckler? Yeah, as a fighter, you know, to sum it up as a fighter. Yeah, I think that's where you're going to take your athletics. Athletics, and you're going to take your perception. Perception, mm-hmm. correct. And then for half elf, we can go into things that we don't actually not necessarily get, and then we have to decide again what kind of swashbuckler is he. So, persuasion could be anywhere, but if you were looking for the, as you were saying, the romantic type, you could go that way. If you wanted deception, then you could totally be the. I'm gonna, 
I'm going to be the foil. Right, or, you know, hey, your shoes are untied, or whatever. Right. Yeah, so, like deception and combat. Look behind you. <laughs> I, I don't know how, how many other groups do things, but I know our group tends to move away from the romantic side. So let's make the braggart. Let's let's make the the one who's going to try and convince someone that their shoes are untied. All right, we got one vote for braggart. I actually vote for romance. What do you want, Nate? <laughs> oh, I've got to be the tiebreaker. you got to be the tiebreaker. Are you going to be the one to make it weird at the table, or... I'm going to have to settle for not weird. Sorry, Dave. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So he's, he's, he's a braggart. So, okay. So he's a braggart. And we also say he's going to take acrobatics. Right. Um, so he can flip around. So deception and acrobatics from his half elf. Right. Then that gives us folk hero, which he's going to get animal handling. And survival. And survival. So, he, so he's handy. He, you know. So I, you know, I'm almost like, in my mind, like, this is like, I see like a country bumpkin going to the city. You know, to to make a name for himself. Who's, who's really, he's like the big fish, small pond kind of guy. Yes, absolutely. So he's really arrogant and brags about all the kinds of stuff. And he, mm. he seems to be doing okay because he's still alive. <laughs> right, right. But then he gets to have the actual big pond and is like, oh. <laughs> so things are a little bit different here. He's also going to have um, one tool proficiency, right? Mm. And I think we should, well, I want to try and sneak it in there anyway. I think we should make it like artist tools or something like that. Ooh. Painter's tools or something. Yeah, I can So I can he can paint that. his French girls. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> I can still make it weird. <laughs> I, I'm cool. I like that. And uh, and he has land vehicles, so he knows how to ride a horse and stuff right. like that. And that goes well with the animal handling, so yes. it totally works. So, so he's pretty well rounded out. He, you know, he, I think this guy could be a lot of fun to play with. you know. And you know, when you get into the backstory, too, of... If you're going with, hey, he's kind of like a, a country bumpkin, but let's not forget, he's also a half elf. Like, so that means one of his parents was an elf and one was a human. Mm -hmm. So, unless you're going with some weird thing that they've done <laughs> in fifth edition where there's just a civilization of half elves living someplace, everyone kind of did like a weird thing like that too. But yeah, so I feel like the parentage to this character can be really interesting too. And, you know, maybe that's why he like runs away from his, his country. Uh, his country way of living because one of his parents is from like a big city or or a very cultural place and he grew up on the stories you know oh, so yeah, he wants to get back to his roots yeah so in my mind well it's not so much just roots because your roots are wherever you're really from but in my mind like so he's he spent his whole life romanticizing about this other place right mm -hmm. and maybe you know maybe his father was the elf and um probably good with the sword yeah. So that's why he picked it up. Yeah, and that's where he, you know, that's why where he learned it. Or, you know, or, I mean, you can even go the other way around. It, does, it doesn't really matter. But, you know, someone, you know, some, someone had to t teach him how to be a fighter anyway. Uh, and then the folk, so and then the folk hero thing, now that could even happen after he gets to the city. Like, you know, maybe something that's kind of like a regular thing in the city. But to him, you know, kind of offends him, so he sticks up for the little guy, and that's how he starts getting himself in trouble. Plus, he's running his mouth, and you know, he, <laughs> he makes he's a he big makes shot. A, he makes a name for himself, but, whether, whether it was his plan or not. And right. The, and so the common folk are very happy he did it, but they're also kind of like he kind of drew attention to. What's yeah, going right, on. right. You shouldn't have done that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it it kind of works for me this time, but it's not going to work for you in the long run. So what do you guys think? Uh, how would you build this character? Let us know in the comments below. While you're at it, like, share, and subscribe. You can patronize us in a good way over on Patreon. You can check us out over at nerdarchy.com. So until next time, stay, stay nerdy. nerdy.